to in invite a practitioner, powerful, thoughtful. Humorous. Yes, yes, keep them coming. <laughs> Humorous. She is a creative spirit. This morning, Reverend John said, is that color peach? And I said, yeah. And Carol said, no, 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 it's apricot. <laughs> so that discerning eye for color, for creativity, and indeed, she is certainly God's channel of, of expression this morning. And I invite you to put your hands together and welcome our speaker, practitioner Carol Kiang. Sandy for setting the tone for this morning so beautifully. It was absolutely perfectly in sync with what I'm going to try and say. So this February has been the month of love, as it always is. And I wanted to close out this month with thoughts about love. So when I sat down to write this talk, the title came to me first a time to love. But it just wasn't flowing. I'd write a line, and I'd wait. <laughs> I'd write another line, and I'd wait. So I asked myself, what is love? What is this thing we call love? And why am I having such difficulty expressing this concept? We all know love because we have all felt love, right? I remember reading in the Science of Mind text that love is the sole impulse for creation. It is the very reason for our being. That's big. The glossary in the Science of Mind describes love as a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. That's even bigger. We have heard that love is the ever-givingness of spirit. That's bigger still. So I knew it wasn't only about romance. That's an effect of love. Neither was it that tug at your heartstrings when an infant looks adoringly at you with this toothless grin. That too is an effect of love. Nor is it the kindness of friends and strangers that brings tears to your eyes. These all are effects of love. So what creates this warm, fuzzy feeling that we long for, that we are so familiar with when we feel it? And what equally cautions us when we are in an unloving mental state? It must be something that is larger, more expansive than we can describe, or circumscribe, or perhaps even understand. But because we can recognize it when it shows up in our experience, we must already possess it, because we can't recognize something that we don't know. To recognize means to know again. So if it's within us, and we didn't put it there, it has to be part of our inherent nature. And since our nature is part of God, then love and God must be part and parcel of the same one. Not so? OK. I said, all right, I'm with you so far. We're going with this. I have a talk to write. Hmm, I heard. You know that love and hate can't exist in the same space in mind, right? Oh, that. <laughs> Who says so? Yeah, so? So forgiveness is a big part of being able to express love in whatever form, even the written word. Look here, God. <laughs> now, I knew immediately what was being referred to. Because for quite a while, I had been consumed with anger at a particular individual because of an unfolding situation, and forgiveness was nowhere on my radar. <laughs> me said, God, you know my heart heavy right now. 
God said, yeah, I know. There's only one way to lighten the load. Forgive. Now, I took a deep breath. Well, actually, I took several deep breaths. <laughs> I called the person to mind, took a few more deep breaths, and said calmly and quietly, I forgive you. You did the best you knew how. You are now released from my angry thoughts, which are now completely dissolved. Go free. Now, you know that they said the jailer and the prisoner are both in jail, right? Well, no lie. Immediately, I felt a cloud lift. And I knew that the situation would no longer be a factor. Not then, not now, not tomorrow. So I want you to try something right now. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. This won't take long. Allow someone to come to mind. The name that pops up is the name that you need to hear. This is someone who could use your forgiveness right now. It doesn't have to be monumental. It can even be just a little annoyance that you've been trying to shake. Now take a deep breath and sincerely speak to the person. If you know their name, call them by name and say, I fully and freely forgive you. Go free. I fully and freely forgive you. Go free. Now take another deep breath and gently open your eyes. How did that feel? I saw a lot of smiles, actually. You might not have known that you were smiling, <laughs> but I saw a lot of smiles when you were releasing. If the hurt runs deep, you might need to repeat this exercise until you truly feel freed from the burden of unforgiveness. So if I were to ask you, when is an appropriate time to love, how would you respond? Okay, yeah, now, anytime. Because now is the only time there is, right? But every now has within it the now that was just a second ago, or an hour ago, or a week ago, five years ago, 15, 50 years ago. So now is not an isolated space or time. It is the present moment of power, yes, the starting over place where we get another opportunity to realize, as in to make real love in our experience, as our experience. So if we're carrying yesterday's now into this moment, more than likely we'll need to do some radical forgiveness or else we run the risk of contaminating the potential purity of this now. You get that? And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Who in here don't know that? Okay? This is from the Lord's Prayer, which we all know. We all grew up on this prayer as kids. It's the most basic and powerful prayer in the Christian tradition. And which, by the way, is the foundation for what we call spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer. If you go through the Lord's Prayer, you will recognize the steps of treatment. That's where it came from. So if I were to restate it in our current language, it could say, help me to release my mistakes of judgment and anger and error thinking, even as I let go of feeling disenfranchised and unfairly treated by others who are acting out of their own limited knowing out of ignorance. The prayer goes
goes on to say, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Show us how to resist the urge to return to that way of thinking and instead stay focused on what is right and good and true. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For the domain of spirit where we live is one of light and justice and love. All power is ours to use as we demonstrate and share the qualities but glorify our divinity ad infinitum. And so it is. Now prayer and forgiveness are inseparable concepts. That's why we are advised also in the Bible that if we go to pray and we find that we're harboring any ill will towards anybody, we must first go and make peace before we attempt to make prayer. Now this does not necessarily mean we must confront the person face to face, as I showed in my example. Why is this so important? Because prayer is not just some empty word spoken into thin air or recited by rote, as many of us did these prayers that we learned as children. We never really learned them with an understanding of the power that they held. Prayer is a sacred act of invocation. In Science of Mind, we don't pray for things. I'm sure you've heard this many times if you've been here before. But rather, we pray from an attitude of acceptance that invites the thing and makes it welcome in our experience. Now that's love in action. When you invite someone into your space and you make them welcome, that's a loving act. So when you invite thoughts of love, you're being love in action. Deepak Chopra has this to say, and I quote, if you can act from a space of love, you bypass the judgments and burdens of the ego. So expressing compassion, forgiveness, kindness, and a sense of purpose comes easily. Here's an affirmation for you. I'll say it once, and then you can repeat it with me. I find myself in a world created by love. Lucky me. I find myself in a world created by love. Lucky me. Now, in this teaching in the science of mind, we have established that God is love, right? And if we are expressions of God, then we are love in expression. When we speak about the necessity of allowing the expression of love, we're not talking only about romantic love. Nothing wrong with that. Romantic love is wonderful. But we've spoken a lot about that this month so far, so I'm taking you on a little tangent. We're speaking about tuning in and recognizing the wholeness of God, and therefore the wholeness of love, that beautiful transformative energy that is equally evenly present everywhere and capable. This is the energy we tune into when we pray, when we reach out and touch, when we give, when we receive with gratitude. Every experience we have is generated through love, even if it doesn't look or feel like love at the time. But love only loves, though. So knowing this, if we are acting in unloving ways, either to ourselves or another, we get a little juke. That reminds us, no, that's not a loving way to be. That's not you. That juke could look like a physical challenge brought on by poor lifestyle choices, or a financial challenge because we failed to plant good seeds, or a relationship challenge because we were not loving ourselves enough. So we rail and rant and question and blame, all of which, by the way, is totally unproductive in getting back on track. What we need is a conscious return to love. Now there is not a God out there that needs to forgive us or punish us. 
God sees nothing to forgive or to punish. The act of forgiveness is ours by conscious choice. Let me say that again. The act of forgiveness is ours by conscious choice. In the book, A Return to Love, Marion Williamson, who is also the author of A Course in Miracles, says, and I quote, pain doesn't stem from the love we're denied by others, but rather from the love that we deny them and ourselves. Now, Dr. Elma, if you never knew Dr. Elma, you missed somebody very special. <laughs> she used to tell me, Carol, dear, Everyone is your teacher, even if you don't like them or the lesson. Learn quickly so you don't have to be repeating it forever. <laughs> we are in each other's lives to help us see where we need to heal and where we need to forgive. That's our purpose for being. That's why love is part of who we are and inseparable from how we are, but it's a conscious choice to use it, to be that way. Here's another affirmation for you. I give thanks that God loves by means of me. Repeat it. I give thanks that God loves by means of me. Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of the earliest teachers of the science of mind, says, and I quote, in that state of love, we see no evil in anybody or anything, seeing only their good. We receive no injury at anybody's hands. We receive, we rejoice in all that occurs. Love diffuses all with its power, end quote. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I quote, everyone can be great because anybody can serve. You don't have to have a college degree to serve. You don't have to make your subject and verb agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. I want to share a little story with you. It's a very short one from Chicken Soup for the Soul. It's called One at a Time. A friend of ours was walking down a deserted Mexican beach at sunset. As he walked along, he began to see another man in the distance. As he grew nearer, he noticed that the local man kept leaning down, picking something up and throwing it out into the water. Time and again, he kept hurling things out into the ocean. As our friend approached even closer, he noticed that the man was picking up starfish that had been washed up on the beach and one at a time, he was throwing them back into the water. Our friend was puzzled. He approached the man and said, good evening, sir. I was wondering, what are you doing? I'm throwing these starfish back into the ocean. You see, it's low tide right now, and all of these starfish have been washed up onto the shore. If I don't throw them back into the sea, they'll die up here from lack of oxygen. I understand, my friend said. But there must be thousands of starfish on this beach. You can't possibly get to all of them. There are simply too many. And don't you realize this is probably happening in hundreds of beaches all up and down this coast? Can't you see you can't possibly make a difference? The local man smiled, bent down, picked up yet another starfish, and threw it back into the sea. He replied, hm, made a difference to that one. <laughs> Any time is a time to love, because the more we give it, the more there is to give, and the more opportunity there is to give, and the more we receive. Love is something we give, and the getting is incidental and automatic. So let's give love today and every day. Namaste. <laughs>